But once you get the hang of it, it becomes very obvious. And it's, uh, I always tell people, do it graphically, do the flip and shift method. So first, with convolution in general, if we have two functions, some, this never does work. This is a brand new marker, supposedly. But let me go through this again. When we convolve anything, we're going to call the output y of t of the system. And convolution is the operation. If we have x of t convolved with h of t, that's the same thing as h of t convolved with x of t. So the order does not matter. That's the first thing. Second thing, the fundamental definition is an integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tau. Tau, I call it a dummy variable because it's going to be integrated out. It will not appear in the final form. Times h of t minus tau, d tau. And I always tell people, the function that has the most going on, you leave alone, put it as a function of tau. The thing that has the least going on, you flip and make it h of minus tau, and then you shift it over by t. So keep that in mind. Now, the functional, the first, the functions I want to show you so you get a better feel for this. If you have one function, and I'm going to say, uh, I'll have, matter of fact, in general, anything. You can call this f of t and you want to convolve it with a delta function, delta of t minus a. Now, a's can be a constant and it can be anything. t, remember, the convolution, the operation is in time, so this is going to be my y of t. When I take a look at this, I'm just going to write the fundamental definition and show you the answer, and you'll remember this one. This is why delta functions are so important. If the property is called sifting. It will be an integral from minus infinity to infinity of now f of tau. Everybody follow me? I replaced the variable t with tau. And then here, what was t here? Now I replace with t minus tau. So I have quantity t minus tau minus a. And this is all d tau. Does everybody follow me on this? I just repeated the fundamental definition with the delta function. Got me? Please watch this. This is important. Now, I know the delta function basically turns on and has a non-zero value only for one instant in time when its argument is zero, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So you find out when that argument, and then the only thing it does if it's an integration, it samples the value of the adjacent function at that point, correct class? Remember the integration is in tau, so here we go ahead and we write t minus, uh, minus tau, pardon me, minus tau, minus a equals zero, that's where I know the delta function will turn on, agree? And when I go ahead and do this, I find out that therefore tau is equal to t minus a. So it samples the value of f at tau equals t minus a, or it's just f of t minus a. That is the convolution of that delta function with any function of time. In other words, the only thing it does is it says instead of having an f of t now, I have an f of t minus a. Follow me on that? It samples that value of a function when the delta function turns on, and that's the terminology I use. Okay, now that's, does everybody see this? It's straightforward, and it'll be useful in a, in a bit. Next function I want to show you how convolution works for are two, they call them boxcar functions. They're really pulse functions, but they're not centered at zero. So. Here are the other, the, I'm going to say I'll have one function, I'll call this x, t, as a height of 1, 1 here, this is the axis time. So now I have a drawing. My second function, call it h of t, it looks like this. 
type one. Everybody follow me? I want to convolve those two. So I want to convolve when I say that y of t is equal to the convolution of x of t convolved with h of t. I want to convolve them. Remember, it doesn't matter which one you do as a first operation. All right? So I'm going to take the one that has a length 2, simply because I'm suspicious it would be more difficult to flip and shift that. Everybody okay with that? Leave that as a function tau. So now I have my 1, 2, 1. This is my h of tau. And this is going to be x of t minus tau. Does everybody understand my reasoning? Now when I do that, what I really am going to do is first I'm going to say I'll take x and I'll make it of minus tau, right? And that would look like this, right? Everybody follow me? I just flipped it around the axis, but I haven't shifted it yet. Does everybody see that? Is there any overlap right there? Nothing, right? We know that really this point right here, let me be a little clear. This point will be t, and this will be t minus 1, because that's the width of 1, right? Now, when t is 0, it's literally right there, and it starts, it would be from minus 1 to 0, it would have a non zero value. Everybody got that? But you can see, when I do the convolution operation here, I can say for that one, y of t will be 0 for t less than 0. That's obvious, because there is no overlap. There's nothing where the two functions are both non-zero. Right, class? Because we're going to multiply then integrate, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, when we see for t greater than 0, but less than 1, you can see what's going on here. Now, this function's creeping up this way, and these two functions overlap, correct? Mm -hmm. So you take the product of the two and integrate them, correct, class? Mm -hmm. Well, the product, and I chose it 1 for a reason. I didn't want to do anything really complicated. 1 times 1 is 1, right? Integrated from 0 to t is just t, correct? So it's 1 times t. So from here, y of t is simply t. Now, everybody with me so far? Now you can envision this, and I'm going to show you an application. Did anybody look at that JavaScript that I put up there? All right, that JavaScript is fantastic, because you can draw your own functions if you want. How many looked at that? All right, I suggest everybody look at it and try it. I'm going to put it up here in a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. This will help you visualize the operation. It'll really make sense to you, I think. All right, and it helped classes before. It helped me, actually. The way I teach things, it, become a lot, it becomes a lot easier to present information if you have something graphical that you can have in real time do, do the operation. All right, now when this moves through, what happens when t equals 1? All right, well, when t, this is not drawn to scale. All right, when t equals 1, all of a sudden the entire boxcar down here with 1 is immersed in this, right? And no matter, it keeps going, there's no greater overlapped area, right? Mm -hmm. So the area becomes constant until I hit 2. So I can say from 1 greater than t less than 2, here's what I'm talking about. Now this function looks like this for that time frame. And you can see now the overlapped area is from here to here, right? And the height is 1, right? So it's 1 integrated from t minus 1 to t, which is just 1, right? Mm -hmm. It's really the area, correct, class? Multiply the two functions and get the area. So that means here y of t here is just equal to 1, all right? Everybody see this? There's a couple things I'm going to show you that would be, be useful to you. All right, now let's go past t equals 2, and I want you to see this. Now, when all of a sudden t is greater than 2, now it looks like this, but the overlapped area is from here, right, to 2, not to t. Does everybody see that? All right, now when I do this one, when I want to get y of t, I have to multiply these two functions, then integrate them, right? So it's the integral from t minus 1 all the way to 2. The product is still 1, 
the tau, correct class? Mm -hmm. And when you do that, what do you get? You get tau evaluated from two to t minus one, so it's two minus the quantity t minus one, or really, it's simply three minus t. And that would be what, what uh, y of t, or the convolution of those two would be from t greater than two, less than three. Do you all agree with that? And by the way, when you're doing this, check it, make sure it makes sense. Shouldn't at three it be zero, because that's when this boxcar finally comes through, it's passed, or there's no area of overlap. Do you all see that class? Now check it, at three, what happens? Well, when t equals three, I got three minus three, it's zero, right? And finally, you can say y of t is equal to zero for t greater than three. You all agree with me there? Now, when you graph that function, and I'll ask people to do this, I, I, I guarantee on a quiz and on a test, I ask for a little sketch of the thing. And I, I mean, the functions will never be difficult to sketch. But when you look at this, the convolution, convolution of those things, it looks like this. If this is one, this is two, this is three, it comes up. Its a value of one, stays there, and then goes down. Agree? Now something that you'll notice, and this is true of any, any time-limited function that you do convolution to. If you have any two functions that have an existence where they're non-zero only for limited periods of time, like pulse functions, triangle functions, stuff like this, the width of the, when you do convolution of the two functions, will always be the sum of the width of the first plus the second. Width of one was two, the width of the other was one. It, three and its width is three. Do you all see that? Second thing is any functions um, that are, I, say, I use the word symmetric, um, that uh, really have something, if you took the center of the function, you flipped it, it was the same thing. For instance, a triangle function, a boxcar function, Anytime you're dealing with the functions like that, the convolution will always result in a symmetric function, something that's got symmetry right down the center. You see how if you go right down the center at 1.5, this is identical to this if you just wrap it around the axis? Everybody see that? That will always be true when you can involve two functions that have, I say, yeah, that are symmetric. Now, we're gonna do a few other convolutions. Are you with me so far on this stuff? Convolution is a difficult concept. I'm, I'm going to level with you, and it takes some time to get a handle on. Now I'm going to introduce a little more complexity before I do the homework problems, all right? I'm trying to build. So if we can see this, you should be able to see the next logical steps that I take. Now my two functions are going to look a little different. Let me do it on this side. By the way, this boxcar stuff, when you, start, when you start there, you can start seeing things. Things start making more and more sense to you, usually. All right, next, we'll do this. Now I'm gonna take a function. This is time, this is gonna be my first function. It looks like this. And this is gonna be my x of t. And I want to convolve this with my h of t. My h of t is going to look like this. And I've chose this not to be too difficult. Now you see I'm using the scale of that and just one is the height, right? I've done something where I've made these very easy to understand. This is time too. All right. Remember, when you do convolution, you're going to take one of them and you're not going to shift it and let tau be the axis. On the other one, you replace t with tau, you flip, and then you shift, correct? And I always tell you to flip and shift the one with the least going on. Of these two, which one has the least going on? Okay. The rectangle or the boxcar, correct class? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna have this one that we do the flip and shift, this one we leave alone, so it looks like this. Now we put our x, um, really tau here, and it looks like this. <coughs> remember I told you you have to be able to write an equation for a straight line. This is probably the easiest straight line you can get <laughs> because the slope is one, right? 
and it's got a zero intercept, right? Zero intercept. So this function is just describable as tau for tau greater than zero, less than one. And I forget about greater than or equal to, I don't care about that. It's in a math course. All right, are you all with me on this class? Take that. Now below it, <coughs> now we flip this function. So we get h of minus tau, and that looks like this, minus one to zero, right? And you can see right there, there's no overlap, right? So for t less than zero, because that would be the, the shifting, we know the function, the convolution of those two would be zero. Just so I'm clear about this, what I'm doing is this, y of t is x of t involved with h. That's the function I'm doing. That's what I'm up to, all right? And you can write the integration definition. You should do that over and over again until it's automatic. If you want to, just go ahead and write it from integral from minus infinity to infinity uh, of x of tau, h of t minus tau, d tau. Just write that over and over again so it's automatic. And you won't think, oh, what's the definition? Once you do this enough times, it'll be like f equals ma. Right? You just can't miss it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add that shift point. So this becomes t minus 1, and this is t. And now this is going to be h of t minus tau, right? And here's t. And you can see this is the overlap area, right? These are where the two functions have non-zero values, and they, I call it overlap. Now, you have to take the product of those two functions. Luckily, it's just 1 down here, right? 1 times this, which is just tau, right? And integrated, correct class? Please, does everybody see this? All right, so let's do it. When we do this, now we're going to say, well, that's true there. Now we're going to have for t greater than 0 and less than 1, we're going to say our, uh, I'm, well, actually, for t, uh, for t less than 0, convolution y of t is equal to zero. For this one, when I look at this from here to here, what I need is the integration of tau, right? This is just tau, correct class? Tau times d tau integrated from zero to t. Does everybody agree with that, by the way? Right? Starts at zero, goes to, ta to t, correct class? Everybody see that? All right, well, what's that going to be? Well, that's just going to be tau squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to t, or t squared over 2. Agreed? i got to make sure everybody sees this, right? If you understand this and see this, you just give me a show hands so I can make sure. Do you all see it down here? Do you see it? Okay. I want to make sure. If, we, if everybody's good on that, let's go to the next part. Now... This box car is moving this way as t is getting greater. Finally, it's going to move inside there, right? And that would be, that's the important point. Finally, when we get to this point, remember, that width, this width is 1 as well. So this is t, this is t minus 1. But now we're going to be in the range of what? From 1 greater than t less than 2. And I want to know what y of t is, so take a look. Now the area, or the region of overlap would be a better way to put that, is going to be from where? Please take a look at this, t minus 1, right? To what? Class? One. To 1. Not to t. Follow me? Because out here, this part <coughs> would be multiplied by 0. So now from there to there, to get this, I would simply do the integral from of tau, d tau, same as before, but now my limits would be t minus 1, right, to 1. And that means you get tau squared over 2 evaluated from t minus 1 to 1, or I get 1 half times 1 minus the quantity t minus 1 squared. Everybody agree with that? I have to do the integrate that integration. You have to do carefully. People will mess that up when they're in a hurry. 
And you can go ahead and expand it if you want. That's, that's a proper answer there. But if you want to, what is this going to be? It's 1 half times the quantity. Well, it's 1, right? Minus t squared. That's a t squared, right? Then it's minus 1 because minus 1 times minus 1 would be 1. Minus, and then it's going to be what? Plus, and you're going to get 2t, correct? So you can see the minus 1 and plus 1's cancel. And now I have 1 half times t squared. Uh, I'm sorry, minus t squared. So it's 2t minus t squared, or if you will, t minus t squared over 2. And that would be what this is. And finally, what is y of t when t is greater than 2? Now just think about that. Uh, I'm not trying to go real fast here, but this, there's a lot of cartoon stuff that I have to draw right here. So now finally, when I come out and I take a look, and I'm at, when t is greater than 2, then there's no overlap, right? You all see that class? Give me a show of hands. How many see this? All right. Now, drawing that out, this is always interesting. If you take a look at this, this function, it starts out as just um, t squared over 2 from 0 to 1. So this would be 1 half, and it's basically doing this, right? Then from 1 to 2, it's t minus t squared over 2. That'll look like this. I call it a shark fin. You can go ahead and sketch it yourself. I mean, but or just graph it, but that's what it'll look like, a shark fin. Now, I gave you problems that actually did this kind of stuff. I gave you a bunch of problems, but you can see how I'm building a little more complexity into each, each problem. Right about here, we can start doing problems that you have an interest in seeing, but I hope by now you see how it's done uh, and get an idea, if you haven't already. And there's a lot of YouTube videos on this. I'm going to just get, give this guy a plug. There's a guy named the Khan Academy. Have you ever seen this guy? He has, I think he has one on convolution that's really good if you want us to take a look at it. Uh, honestly, there are probably many, if you go to MIT, they usually have really good things too on the free site for just look up signals and systems. But there's so much. There's a guy named, I think, Oppenheim. It's an MIT that does a great job on this stuff. He's from the 80s, I think, or 90s. Get some old videos, but they're really good. I got a lot of problems and solutions here too. Just go ahead and, huh? Go ahead. Um, I can Here, hold on. You keep that one. Uh, I can give you reading assignments if you want, but you can kind of figure out what you want to read in here. Um, They got a uh, square pulse, and then they've got. It looks like a um, offset saw. I mean, an offset digital waveform. Uh, for the first one, uh, just help me out here. The first one goes to two, right? Yes. And it has a height of four. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's x of t. Yes. Yes. So they want to convolve with something that. Where does it? 
Does it go to stop? Does it start at one to go down or? Yeah, yeah it goes down at one. And then at two. At three, it goes back up. Right. So it does. Where does it start? Value wise. Uh, it starts at uh, two. And goes to one. It minus goes, one. Goes down to minus one, and then at three, it goes back up to two. And then at four, it goes to zero. All right. Now remember the game here. This is my, is this H of T or what do they call That's it? H of T, yes. I always tell people, don't shift the one. I mean, the one that's got the most going on, you don't shift. That's my advice. Mm -hmm. So that's that one. Do you all agree with that? Mm -hmm. So you leave that alone. And what you're going to do is have just H of tau here. And that one, two, that's one, minus one. Two or zilch. The other one you flip. So if I take this one and I flip it around the axis like this, it goes back to minus two, right? And it has a height of four. Right there, there's no area of overlap. So I know for t less than zero, the convolution of the two is zero, correct, class? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say that since I'm going to assume y of t assumes the convolution, is 0 for t less than 0. Now y of t, and this would be for the next increment, and you can almost see what happens here. As it's incrementing through here, right, where this becomes t, and this becomes t minus 2, it's going to have really no change in the product of these two all the way up to 1. Do you all see that? Uh, it creeps in between 0 and 1 time-wise. It's the same in terms of the product values, right? So for this one right here, if we want the convolution, it would be the integral of the product of the two functions, which is 2 times 4, or 8, d tau from 0 to t, or simply 8t. So it's 8t for t greater than 0, less than 1. You all agree with me there? Can you all see what I'm up to? Where did you get the eight? Well, when you multiply two times four, because the height is four, right? That's four times two would be eight. Remember, it's the product of the two, and then you do the integration. Correct, class? Mm -hmm. Here's where it's a little more complexity. Now it's not just one height. You got different heights. Yes, sir? So it's not just the area of overlap? It is. And I mean, it's the product. You have to take the product of those two functions over the area it's overlapped and integrated. Remember, it's the product of x times y, or I mean x times h of t minus tau, integrated. Not just the product, but you have to integrate. All right. Frankly, it is, if you want to take a look at this, if you take this times this and get the result, and then you integrate, you really are getting the area, though, aren't you? All right, now here, where's the next interval? Now we go from where? 1, think about this, this has a width of 2 only. We go from 1 to 2, follow me? Right, so now, for t greater than 1, less than 2, that's what I'm after my y of t here, now that integral is what? Well, when I look at that, you see that this thing is going to capture all that, the 2 times the 4 is 8 from 0 to 1, that would be the integration, would be just 8. Do you give me that? Mm -hmm. Then I have to subtract from it this. So now I'm going to have minus 8 here, I'm sorry, plus 8 minus the integral, and now, just I'll try to draw this run. This is one that's got more steps to it. Now for this one, when I'm between 1 and 2, I have this. And you can see I have all this area here, but I also have to subtract off that area. And that's going to be minus 1 times, and this height is 2. This is actually, uh, I'm sorry, 4, right? Mm -hmm. That's 4, so it's minus 1 times 4. So it's 4 d tau. And here it would go, if you look, this goes from 1 to t. 
you ask this question. Do you follow me what I'm doing here? Yes. All right. Remember that the first chunk from zero to one second, that area is still there, right? That multiplicative area. So you have to include that. Now you're going to be subtracting off this next bunch right here. How many understand what I'm doing here? I know I'm talking a little fast. What don't you understand? Where did you get the T for the upper bound? Uh, the rest of it I see, but well, I'm not. Well, you see, this is T, right? Mm -hmm. All right, we're drawing the curtain. The curtain, the furthest we can go is the T, right? Mm -hmm. So that means when we take this times this and do the integration, we integrate from zero to one, we get that up to here, which is eight, right? Then when we in integrate from here, it would be one, right? Mm -hmm. Two T. We're not at two yet. Okay. Okay. You got me? Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. Is the plus and plus because you're gonna add the one you did before it? That's that eight yeah. is just this right here. It's okay. this times this. I, I could put that up there as a separate integration, but we did it already. Right. So I think it, it is everybody yeah. see that? It's fairly yeah. obvious, but you have to make sure you see it. Now, what is this gonna be? Well, that's equal to eight minus four times the quantity t minus one, right? So it's eight minus four t plus one, or it's nine minus four t. Do you all agree with that? This is gonna be for t greater than two, less than three. I want you to just see what I'm doing. Are you on? Yes, sir. Um, shouldn't you distribute that negative <coughs> to the one? 12? Wait a second. Minus well, oh, oh, 12. Yeah. Minus 14. Okay. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you're right. This should be 12. You're absolutely right. My bad. Minus 4t. Whoever said that, thank you. All right, my bad. This is 12 minus. That's my bad. I'm in a hurry here because this is a long one. <laughs> We're trying to get this done. All right, I'll slow down. Do you all see what's going on here? Pretty much you can see the steps. Now, when we go between 2 and 3, so that one stays the same. Just the area of overlap is going to change. And now we're between 2 and 3. So here's t, and here's t minus 2, right? And so t is here, and when I look at this, now I end up down here. Ah, what did I do? I didn't draw that very well. That's t minus 2. Do you all follow me on this class? So now what I have to do is I have to take the product of these two, over the range of where they overlap, and that's here and here, out to T, and it's from here all the way to here. And I have to integrate from this point, right, to this point, after, but I have to take the product. So that means the integrations from here to here would have a value, it would be from T minus two, two times uh, that's four, right? Two times four is eight. Let me write it out for you. This one I'll, I'll write out a little more carefully. So for this one, it would be y of t would be equal to the integral. The limit down here is t minus two. The upper limit, uh, I mean, it goes from t minus two to one, correct class? Mm -hmm. To one, and the product of four times two is eight, right? Eight down. And then I have to take the product of minus 1 times 4, because now I'm going to integrate from here from 1 to t. So it's going to be minus 4 times the integration from 1 to t of just d tau. Are you with me on this one? Remember, we're taking the product and we do the integration, correct class? So there's two distinct regions where you have to do it, okay? All right. Now, what is this going to be? Well, this is just 8 times the quantity 1 minus the quantity t minus 2. I'm going to leave it like that for now. I just did the integration and I put in the limits. Minus 4 
times t minus 1. You all agree with me? How, how many see this right here, what I'm doing? I'm just going through the motions of integration. When I do this, this is actually a correct answer. Now, you can simplify this, obviously. 8 is a multiplier. If I have 1 minus a minus 2, that's really 3, right? 3 minus t times 8. Agree with me? Times 8 out in front. And then down here, now I have minus 4t plus 4. And, and that's fine right there. You can keep, if I want to go ahead and put 24 minus 8t minus 4t is minus 12t, I could keep on simplifying if you agree with me. But that's essentially the same thing. And I'm going to just say this by now. Do you have, you have the solutions to this one, right? Yes. Uh, do their solutions agree with this? Do you have them available to you? Or no? I, I'm certain they do, but the thing about it is the final form may not be this. They may simplify it further. But it, it, it is, in essence, the same thing. If you combine things, it doesn't matter. But just check. I mean, you're going to see this in some way. Who, you did, how many people tried that problem? Uh, it takes a while, right? A lot of steps, but the only thing you can say about this is it's a little more tedious, but it teaches you to be attentive to detail. Even <laughs> I made a mistake on that one because I'm trying to fly through it. Uh, we could do the last step, but I don't know. Because this is going to be four more steps, right? This window is still moving. It's got to go through. The, it's got to go from, what, two, from th three to four, and then from four to five, right? And then uh, is there five to six? It's got until that window is completely out of there. So it's up to seven seconds, right? So remember, the final width will be the width of this, which is four, and the width of this, which is two. So it's six. I'm sorry, up to six. Agree, class? All right. Do I need to do that? Because I've only got 10 minutes left. <laughs> All right, how about another one? That's a good problem, but it's tedious. Something maybe with variable functions, uh, 2.12. Hey, is that the one with the exponentials? No, we can do that one. Didn't I give you one with the exponentials? Yes. Somewhere. That's a good one. 1.17, I think. Was it 11 or 7? We just did 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, there's one with two exponentials. I like that one. Yeah. But that's not now. They're not time limited. Those are those have infinite. I mean, the extent is either infinite or semi-infinite for those. Uh, which ones did you, you ask before? You assigned uh, 2.17. Is that one, the is that the one you asked for, or not? Um, which one no, did you ask for? That was 212. What is 212? Oh, that one? We can do that one. These are time limited. We'll try to go through. The, these time limited, if there's not too much, see the one we did had too much changing. If there's not much changing, time limited are fairly easy. Some of these ones are going for an infinite time extent. The integrations can get a little irritating because you're not used to integrating like e to the minus t over 2 times sine t, stuff like that, where you have to really do some tricks. But uh, this one isn't that bad, I don't think. So let me go ahead and graph this. What's the number on that again? Two? So x of t. 212, right? Yeah. So here they have x of t here and. Height uh, of 2, width of 1. Oh, perfect. This is t. And then you have h of t, and that's the triangle, right? Mm -hmm. And it does. Is this centered at 1? Yes, centered at one. Comes down at two? Yes. Height and of one? Height of two. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> All right, well, that's the one you don't want to flip and shift. Do you follow me, class? Mm -hmm. That's that's a little more problematic. But you see they're symmetric, which you know the final answer is going to be symmetric. And the width of the final answer is going to be the sum of one and two or three. That'll be the, the duration of that function when you do convolution. So we want to convolve these two functions. And we say that y of t is x of t convolved with h of t. So the one you don't flip and shift is the one that's got the most going on, and it's this guy. So I leave that guy alone, and I call that h of tau. One, two. And it goes up to two. And... Now we need an equation to 
you have to get a mathematical equation describing this. First part, from zero to one, I can say h of t is just tau. Oh, I'm sorry, it's two tau, right? Two times tau for tau greater than zero, less than one. Are you all agree with me there? Now the second part has got a slope of minus two, so it's gonna be minus two tau, right? And you have to get the point value, and we know here, uh, well, you can go get the zero intercept. Here we know when tau is two, the value is zero, correct class? Mm -hmm. So when tau is two, two times two is four with a minus sign, minus four plus something is zero. So the zero offset is going to be four. Do you all agree with me there, class? And this would be what h of tau is for tau greater than one, less than two. Correct? Now we go to the next part. You all see what I'm doing here? I'm just writing the equation for a straight line here, right? So the slope is minus two, right? And the zero intercept you get from where it intersects the axis at two, right? So two times minus, two times minus two is minus four plus four is zero. In fact, it works, right? Mm -hmm. Now we go on. And now we do our flip and shift. So we take that function, we flip it. And that's the function x of minus tau. Is there any overlap? No. So one thing we can conclude right off the bat is the convolution of these two functions for t less than 0 is 0. Do you all see that? Right? Everybody should see that without any problem. Now we go to the next step. So I'll put it here. Y of t equals zero for t less than zero. Now for y of t, the next thing is we let this guy creep in here. It's t, this bottom part would be t minus one because the width is one, right? And now you can see when you multiply these two functions together, you have two times two tau, or you have four tau, correct? And you integrate it, so for this regime at least, you'd be the integration from zero to t of four tau d tau. Agree? I'm just making sure we all see this, right? So that's going to be simply four times tau squared over two, or two tau, yeah? And you do zero to t because you're doing area of overlap, right? Remember, these two have to be non-zero in the range, right? So this is non-zero out to t. And that's non-zero from zero onward, right? Even though it says non-zero values down here, this doesn't. This is zero. So it's just where they're non-zero. So you go from zero to t, and the integration is d tau. And that means this is tau squared over 2 from 0 to t, or just t squared, I'm sorry, 4 times tau squared over 2, or just 2t two squared. I'm trying to get one more in. I don't know if I'm going to. and that's less than one, okay? Everybody with me? Now, keep thinking about this. When T hits one, the pulse is immersed, right? Then you're gonna have all that area there, right? And in fact, uh, when, when tau is equal to one, you're gonna have what? Um, wait a second. This should be Yeah, this is an equation for the straight line. That's right. Uh, now, uh, so this answer right here, that's true from 0 to 1. And then when we go a little bit further, when we go ahead and we say that now for, for 1 greater than t, less than 2. So now this pulse is going to be inside here. Hope you can understand my drawing. This is t, this is t minus 1, but here it's t greater than 1, less than 2. Now the area of overlap, if you look at this, you're going to have to integrate from t minus 1 to 1, this function, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have to take this function, the integration from 1 to t. This is where it gets a little nerve-wracking, but you have to be attentive to detail. I'm going to tell you. It's the only way to work these things. 
So now this integral, let me erase this one. By the way, when I'm doing these usually, I won't, like you got, I'll have one page where I'm gonna put like this stuff. Then on my scratch sheets, I'm gonna do all the intermediate calculations, the integrations, because it gets just overwhelming. It's, there's so many little ones. So for this, this part of the integration, for this range, I can say that I need an integral from t minus one to one of the product of these two, and the height of this is two, right? And this, so it's two times two tau, or four tau d tau, plus, now I have to take the integral from one to t of this function, right? Which is going to be uh, times two. So I have two times the quantity, <coughs> four minus two tau d tau. Does everybody follow me what I'm doing there? Class? All right. It's take time. I mean, if you to do 20 of these problems, 15 or 20 of these problems, you're talking about three hours, really. And until you get really good at them, you can fly through them. But um, when you're just starting up, it takes a lot of time. And they'll drive you nuts, some of them. Really. Especially the harder integrals. These are simple integrals. So for this one, what do we get for this part of the integral? We get tau squared over two times four, or we get two tau squared, right? Evaluated from t minus one to one, plus, and this is, not to take the two out front, two times the integral, well, 40 tau is just four tau. And minus two tau integrated is gonna be minus tau squared, right? Evaluated from one to t. I just put the limits in there. Just about out of time. You all with me on this one, class? Mm -hmm. Can you follow the steps in this? Think you can just punch through that? Now, the last part of the integration is this. Then when you go from t greater than two, less than three, then you have to take the box car and shove it out. And the integration will go from t minus one to two. Got me on that, class? And you can go ahead and do it. I want to do one thing. If you just bear with me, I want to show you this graphic calc I mean, this graphic JavaScript thing. Because this thing is amazing. Just hang on. I don't try to rush. But it's, it, it'll be worth it, I think. If you haven't seen this, just hang on. What time do you guys have right now, by the way? 1048? 1048, yeah. Good. Some people just, you know, they'll use PowerPoints and stuff to do this course. It, I've always found it much better if you actually do the work on the board, even with the mistakes that they have. You gotta go, you gotta go. I'm just trying to show people how to do this. Alright, now I'm just gonna show you. You can choose a rectangle and another rectangle. Let's do two rectangles. And one thing you can do is offset it. Suppose I want to move this one, I want to start it there and shove this further this way. And I want to do the convolution. Let me speed it up a little. Uh, so what is that going to be? You see how it's flipped and shifted and moving through? And then, bang, it does it right there. There's your answer. 
Now if you do something like this, triangle, a triangle, and a rectangle. See, it draws it right there, right? Now here's, here's what I like to do, custom function. So I want to click and make one. You can actually, there's ways of getting that thing to look just like a triangle. Uh, I got too much zoom. Let me turn it down. Anyway, you can play with that, but any of the functions that I give you, you can go ahead and do your best shot at grabbing them, and it'll show you how the results should look. And it's really nice. And I think there's a way to actually put in a mathematical statement in there, too, if you want. I haven't played with that. But, uh, I, I can't ask for a better tool to show what's going on now. All right. See you next time. I'm going to give you um, some more convolution problems to do. Probably some things that are a little more complicated. And um, please do them. If you have questions, we'll get it. You guys getting this, basically? Yeah. It's tough.